Baby Game 01. Get the flag and reach the exit. Welcome to Baby Game. Navigate around the map and see what you can find. The game is available to download here. No source, so you have to figure a way around the map. Let's see. Use WASD to move around. There may be secret commands to make your life easy. Alright, so we can netcat here. We've got a cheesy game. W goes up. S goes down. Okay. So it displays where we are. We don't have the flag, so we need to get down here to this X. All right, so I've loaded up this game into Ghidra. Uh, Ghidra is the NSA's reverse engineering tool. You can download it for free. You'll need to have a Java SDK installed because this thing is written in Java. And we've opened up <clears throat> the executable, analyzed it, and now we're looking at both the assembly language and the pseudo code that it's created for us. That's kind of a C-like sort of thing. So we have methods for initializing the player, initializing the map, printing the map, and then we read, get a character, move the player, print the map in a loop. Uh, let's see, this looks like 2989. So that was the ending location. So uh, this is what, like the Y coordinate? So we can rename variables. Um, you can see that was the X coordinate. So this one is the Y coordinate. And this variable controls whether or not we win. And it looks like this variable here is probably the map. Uh, no, 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 no. Rename it down here. This is our key that we typed. Okay, so that does a fairly good job here. We've initialized the player with, so it looks like this X chord, Y chord, they're probably passing just pointer and this is really a structure of some sort. Um, See if we can. Uh, maybe we'll just make it an int two. There we go. There we go. So we've got the X and Y coordinates in that array. Now let's look at this move player method. So this is the key. It looks like we've got a couple new things that we can do here. So if we see an L we set the player tile to be the key that was typed. Uh, if we get P, we solve the round. All right, so this is like our coordinates. Maybe that was the map. Let's go back and see which one that was. So we call move player coordinates key and map. Uh, 
Okay, so they're taking map plus the coordinates plus the coordinates, and we're setting that to a period. Okay, so we're just basically, this is gonna update the board, right? So wherever you are on the board, it takes your old position, puts a period there, and then puts you in the new position. We have the solve round. Um, okay, so solve round looks like it just moves you right by typing D's or A's or W's or S's appropriately to get you to that ending location, right? Because it's trying to get you to this 89, 29 point. All right, so if we just push P, it's going to move us all the way. It's going to save me a lot of keystrokes later, I guess. OK. Um, we can also change what character we are on the screen. It's not clear how that's helpful. What we need to think about is how are we going to get it to have the win variable not be 0? OK, so it looks like these are all stored in the stack together. So if we could move backwards, just like before the beginning of the map, we should be able to hit this win variable and replace it with the player's character. All right, so let's try that. So we need to move. before the beginning of the map. OK, one, two, three, four. So if I move four spots before, because so I probably four byte aligned this win variable, so it probably just wasted three bytes there. So I moved four spots before. Now it says I have the flag, because that's 64 is the at character. All right, so now presumably all I have to do is solve. Right, we decided if I push the letter P, it should just solve the map for me. All right, so it moved me all the way to the end, and it gave me my flag gamer mod enabled, or gamer mode enabled.